All right, so at this point, it's the second week of the part three of the class, and we spent all of last week talking about PouchDB, creating a database, being able to save information and retrieve information, edit information, and that's functional, that, uh, that does work. Um, what we ended up with last time was the pouch project. I'm just going to open it quickly in, uh, in the browser. And so remember this HTML file is simply visually it's not that nice looking but uh, functionally I can add a class. So if I was doing this for real uh, class 123x, this is Android 2, Instructor Campos, save class, I get the feedback, class saved, show class, and I've got a table then, I can add another class, class 222j, Android 2, Instructor Smith, save class, show class. So okay, that works, we're adding, we're able to add classes to the database and then uh, if I wanted to delete a class we made it a little cumbersome on purpose in which we need to type the actual class name there then we can hit delete and it'll delete it the database updates and the table on screen updates and let's say we wanted to edit a class um, oops wrong instructor there so you can click on the on the row and it'll auto populate if I didn't click it uh, to auto-populate it, I could still type in 222J Android 2 Instructor Campus. Update that, and it changes. It's just the convenience of I don't want to have to type all of those fields myself before I can update. I can click. When we get it back to our project and have the power of jQuery Mobile, we'll add perhaps an icon that makes it obvious. Click the pencil to edit the to edit the, the row. Right now we don't have jQuery mobile so we can't add that icon. When we integrate it into the project we will have that ability. So that it's obvious for people. Click the pencil, edit the field. And so that's the project in, in the totality of it and we have uh, about 124 lines of code including the HTML and so forth. So let's round it down. 100 lines of code. 100 lines of code to make all of that database stuff work and obviously that there's still more that we can do, more that we can learn, more that, that we can add. Uh, there's of course the whole replication to an external server and such, but with about 100 lines we have the ability to save and retrieve data. And for our purposes it works for this kind of project. It's These are my classes. This is my class schedule that I'm saving. This concept can be used to save a bunch of other user information, names and passwords. Maybe you've got a social network and you're also saving bio, biographical information. So city, state, all of that. There was a student who um, in a previous semester was working on a, on a health uh, app, uh, like a fitness tracking app. How many jumping jacks did I do today? Or how many steps did I take today? And so that you you save you write it down into the app, you save it, and it's saved there into your into your user account in the device. Uh, so there's a lot we can do with this. And I, what I want to do now is integrate it with our with our existing project, and see how we can polish it up a bit so that it can work with, so that it can look nicer in jQuery Mobile. Uh, I'm gonna have my window open here about my pouch project, and then I'm also going to open a window with the with the taco project. So you should have gotten that from the network folder. Uh, I made a copy and I've and I put today's date on it, but you should have gotten 405 from the folder. So I've got a copy right there on my flash drive. I put today's date. That's the taco project that we ended up with three weeks ago last month. So we're going to use that now, uh, and we're going to integrate that all together. And so 
let's remind ourselves there, we've got this fully functional project. The WW folder is where we are going to work with our HTML, of course. And if you got a copy of it, this latest version from my network folder, I went in and just completed a little bit more, a couple of screens that were empty. Just as a quick show, I'm going to open the index in Chrome. It's not going to fully function yet because it is a it is an Android project, so it might not fully function. Oh, actually, Chrome is not going to like it. I'm going to open it in Firefox. So just to look at it quickly, it's a... Uh, There's our project. I went in and added that little paragraph of text there at the beginning. And in the art screen, I filled in a little text here and there. It was pretty empty. I think in a few places we just had some gibberish, and another we had like add content here. So I did go in and, and fill in a few of these screens that were that were empty. Just borrowed some stuff from Wikipedia, put it in there. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, art calendar just updated that for the latest months, but. Uh, yeah, it's still the same as it was pretty much. No new functionality. There's still the, the map and the customize. Oh, speaking of which, I went into the map, and uh, remember we ha I had said, well, we're going to... Eventually, we're going to add the, the latest functionality to the map screen. I went in ahead and did that, which was just adding the Cordova JavaScript file in the head, right? And what else? Just, uh, oh, the CSS file... Just the basic stuff, no functionality changes, but I just, um, the font, remember we edited the font, but we hadn't attached the new font to this page, so the, the font is in there. Just cosmetic things, I wanted to get that ready for us to, to really use. The idea is, here then on the home screen, I'm going to have a button that says My Classes, and in My Classes I will add a new screen where we're going to add all of this pouch stuff. So let's open the index file of the taco project in Notepad++. <coughs> Go ahead and open that in Notepad. <coughs> Scroll down to line... Um, 59. I don't see your, your project in the Z file. It's 0405. I copied it to my flash drive and okay. changed it to 12. Okay. Line 59, we've got that About button. And then uh, if you notice, if you remember what this is saying here, class UI grid A, that's the jQuery mobile code to create a couple of rows and columns, a little grid. So we've got a grid where we're displaying about. And actually, now that I look at it, it's not wrong, but we should have put this up higher up on line 52. We've got div class block A and block B, and then again block A, block B. We've got row one, row two. For some reason, we put the about, uh, the about button in row two. Visually, it seems to be okay, but conceptually, it's slightly wrong. So actually, what we'll do is let's take that little chunk from line 58 to 60, the button, let's select it and just drag it. Remember, you can drag code. Drag it up to line 52. Move that up to the this other block at the top over here. So it was working, but now that I look at it, uh, we had this four-quadrant grid, and we put the button in the second row for some reason. So I'm going to move it back to the first row, line 52. And what I want to do is, <clears throat> I'm changing the functionality a little bit here. I want, I still want this button, but what I, I don't want it just the icon anymore. I'm going to have two buttons side by side, this About button, and then the My Classes button, so, so that it's no longer simply the icon. Anyone remember how to fix that? Right now it's simply a an icon. I want it to be the words again. Do you remember how we did that? We have data, icon, pos, no text. Exactly. We have there. 
don't display the text. So let's just remove that whole data element, the data attribute. Just delete that, and it'll go back to it'll go back to normal. There must be. There's probably another one. There's no text. I don't think there's yes text, but we do want the text, and the default is to show text. So I'm just going to cut that out. Data icon pause. And then now it goes back like that. I want it just to go back like a regular button because I'm going to put two nice looking buttons side by side. It looked a little awkward. This is just design opinion. But for me, it looked a little awkward to have just a simple circular button and then the other button next to it. So I'm going to put two normal looking buttons side by side. Side by side. So next to it, inside of this UI block B line 57, we're going to create a button called My Classes. <clears throat> Just like line 52, we're going to create an A tag with data roll button and all of that good stuff. So wrap the A tag around My Class. H will give this an H ref uh, to a screen that doesn't exist yet. Do href equals quotes pound my classes. And we need data roll. We need my. Uh, we need data roll equals button so that it behaves like a button. Data icon. We'll have to look up a. We'll have to look up an icon that might fit with this concept. Uh, maybe list. I don't know if that's a real one. We'll we'll look it up in a moment. And I want a transition here. Data transition. I want slide up. This is going to, from the bottom of the screen, it'll slide upward. So a new screen will slide up that will display uh, this screen for classes and such. Yes? Transition. 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 Thank you. See here. So taking a quick look. Okay, list is not a real one. What am I thinking of? Bullets. Yeah. Okay. Bullets will be will work. Data icon bullets will give me like a bullet list. So I'll get a button of about and a button for my classes. We're setting up this uh, uh, structure. That's what I've got so far there. Slide up. All right, so that's a button. It's going to take us to a screen called My Classes, which doesn't exist yet. Let's go ahead and create it. Uh, I'll just simply go all the way to the bottom of the document. So just scroll all the way down. We've got over 300 lines of code in this project, so that means it's a really small project. And um, we're going to add a new section, a new section to display this pouch stuff. I'm going to back up to right before our script section, give myself a couple of empty lines there, and create a new section. 
we should be writing comments and stuff, of course, but uh, we'll get to that. Create a new section, data role, page, ID, my classes. I forgot already, did I call it my classes or my class? My classes. My classes. My classes. A plus, you're paying attention. Yeah. So, uh, yes, whatever we call these things, we just need to be consistent with them. So this is a brand new section. Now, I'm going to mention a couple of things here, data elements that we haven't talked about before, uh, because you might have noticed when we load up our project, especially on one that has, you know, the ability to scroll down, if you scroll down and you tap in an empty spot, it hides your, <coughs> your, your top and bottom bars. You might have noticed that when you you know when you scroll down, it hides, and, and if you tap, it, it does that. We can deactivate that functionality by adding a couple more data elements here. We can add it anywhere else, so it'll only apply here. But the reason I specifically want to add it here is when this pouch project loads up, there'll be a lot of tapping that we do. We tap on this field to fill something in. We tap on that field to fill something in. And that could cause the, you know, the header or the footer to keep appearing and reappearing and appearing and reappearing. Because the default behavior is this. Right? If, I, if I'm scrolling down and I tap, it's going to appear, reappear, appear, reappear. So it's going to do that. And what I'm going to show you here, you can go back and add it to the other sections if you don't want that functionality. But here's what we need. We're going to add, in addition to data role and such, before the ID simply before the ID because like I said I like to uh, have ID as the last element um, oh actually we're gonna add this to the header Linux okay good eye um, okay it's not to the section yet we need to add a header we're, we're gonna add it to the header in a moment so let's add header header is h1 my classes to the header we will add this so this has got the data role header as before so that it behaves like a header data position fixed so that it doesn't scroll away if we scroll down data add dash back dash btn true so that it gives us a simple back button we don't need a whole complex menu like we have on every other screen data add back btn true so we've seen that all before what we're adding now is going to be data dash tap dash toggle equals false so I'm deactivating the ability for to toggle every time I tap for the header or the footer to disappear that's the default behavior true that it will disappear if you tap anywhere the header gets out of the way in case you want to see more content here we're saying false and then it looks like also <coughs> we need one more data dash hide dash during dash focus equals nothing actually apparently we don't set any any value here and here is related to that uh, we might tap an empty area of the pouch screen and we don't want the header to hide so that's data tap toggle false and it looked like that if you also tap inside of one of the fields to type something it would hide the header and it looks like if we do data hide during focus, nothing, then it won't hide. So two extra little things so that that header doesn't hide itself. So this is creating a new section to display my pouch stuff. <clears throat> I want to take a quick look at it in uh, Firefox just to see if it's working before we bring the code over. So save that, run Firefox.
Again, it's not going to behave like a real app yet, but at the very least I should see my button. I should click on My Classes, and it should slide up My Classes. Back button should take us back also. So let's pause right there. Is there any way you can just save that HTML, the index HTML somewhere? Yeah. It's in there in the project, but in the project folder, but let me put it out there. Your, your most latest updates on this, what you're doing. What I did right now? Just now. Oh, sure. Let me see here. So into the Android 3 folder, I'm just going to drop. Drop my index. So in the Android 3 folder, I just that index right there is the latest. All right, so this is what I've got so far. That slides up. Did everyone get that working before we proceed? Anyone? Yes.
Okay, so we've got a screen that now uh, that we can use to actually display our, our content. And it's going to be basically a matter of copying the code from last week's project into this project, and basically it'll work with some massaging, of course. Uh, so what we need to do then is let's first um, go back to your, to your pouch file. Uh, I'm back on my on my pouch, the last version of pouch, which is also in the network folder if you want it, 407. Open up that HTML file in pouch. And let's think critically here what we need to do. Everything in body, which is not a whole lot uh, visually, everything from H1 or so, uh, line 9, I guess basically line 9 to line 18. That's what we need to put basically into the HTML file. We'll do that in a moment, but as a high-level overview. We're going to need to copy over the form and the div of results. That's going to go in the screen we just made in the HTML file. In the HTML file, we're also going to need to connect the pouch library. So we're going to need to copy the pouch file from the pouch project into our current project and reference it in, in the script. We'll do that in a moment. We're also then going to need to take all of this stuff, which is the, the whole meat of it, the hundred lines, we're going to need to take all of this script, except for the script tags, we're going to take all of that script and put it into our kodika.js file. That's JavaScript. Uh, we need it in our project, so we'll add it to the JavaScript file. So that's what we need to do. A little bit of the code in the HTML file and a little bit of the code in the in the JavaScript file. Now, because I always forget this before, before anything, let's copy that pouch library from your pouch project. Just drag it, pouch.js, drag it into your project into the WW folder of your Taco project, drag that in. I always forget that. We write our code and it doesn't work because we don't have a reference, we don't have the actual file. So just drag that pouch file into, into your um, <coughs> Taco project. So confirm that in the Taco project, my index, my jQuery, my map, my pouch. Make sure that the pouch file is in the taco project. And now I want to open the pouch uh, code and let's copy from we line need, uh, 9. Which file? The whole folder? Nope. We're, we need to copy only the pouch.js file and then we're going to copy individual lines of code. From the HTML file, uh, from the pouch HTML file, let's select lines 9 to 17. That is the actual visual stuff, the fields and such. Switch over to your index file and go back all the way to the bottom to the my classes. Oh, we need article. So it goes in the article. Yes, we need an article there. We're gonna forget that article data role. Actually, the article data role is oh yeah, data role content, which we could see right above there. Yes, content 
in the article, in the section of my classes. That's where we paste that form from the pouch file. So just to confirm, you should be in the My Classes section. You need to create that article and then paste the form, paste the stuff in the body from the pouch file. I'm going to go back to the pouch file and then I'm going to copy the script that says script equals pouch. And so we've got jQuery, jQuery mobile, Cordova, Cordova Extra. Uh, I'm going to add it on line 327 before we usually want our custom code last so that it loads last after the other base stuff. So that means let's go back to the pouch practice file and I need to copy line 19. The reference to the pouch file. And I'll go back to My taco index file and I'll paste it on line 327. I'll paste it before Kodika extra.js. Yes. So basically the foundation of everything is jQuery. That's first. Then we've got jQuery mobile. So we can do that whole data role stuff. Then we've got Cordova, which is specific APIs for the device, like the camera, vibration, all of that. Then we got pouch so we can save databases. And then we've got our custom code right there, putting it that external.js. And in that file is where we're going to copy and paste our hundred lines of pouch. So I'm going to save my index. I'm going to go back to pouch practice. And I need to copy everything in script except the script tags. And I guess that comment, that commented code. Um, commented it out for some reason. So I'm going to start with line 22 and go all the way down to line uh, 121. So yeah, 100 lines of code. Copy that whole chunk without the final slash script. We only need the script tags if we're writing JavaScript in an HTML file to delineate the following is JavaScript. But we're copying this and going to paste it in a standalone JavaScript file. So the whole thing is assumed it's JavaScript, therefore we don't need the script tags. Copy that. In my taco project, go ahead and open your kodika.external.js. Be careful. There's CSS and there's JS. This is JavaScript, of course. So open up the JavaScript file in Notepad. And where we're going to add this to is anywhere inside of the onDeviceReady function. The documentation at the Pouch website says if you're going to use Pouch inside of, a, inside of an app, Android app, iPhone app, whatever, it should be added inside of an onDeviceReady function. Our onDeviceReady has all of this all of this already built in that we've worked with previously and it seems to end down here. Um, doesn't matter where we add it, but just so that we can find it quickly, I'm going to add it after everything else that's been added. So at about line 84 is where we load the name. If there is a custom name, press enter there a couple of times and paste. So we just have 100 new lines in our JavaScript file. Mine goes from 86 down to 
um, if I view the index file in Firefox, it still won't quite work. At least, however, if I click My Classes, it should show my boxes and all of those buttons and cool stuff. In a moment, we will add then icons and all of that. <clears throat> and maybe, you know, arrange, make our content look nicer. Remember how plain it looked over here when it was simply uh, when it was simply in with with no jQuery mobile and with jQuery mobile now it's you know looking nice so, like our project instead of that so this still doesn't work if I do save class and all of that it doesn't work anyone know why not or guess so where what's that they are they are connected at all it all works here, and we copy the code as is. This does work. Um, this doesn't work right now because we've put the functionality for these buttons in on device ready. It's in the on device ready function, which does not fire if you simply do run Firefox. We do have to hold, do the whole build taco and build and emulate or run device. That's when then there will be the on device ready trigger, the event. Once that's been triggered and on device ready fires, then all of this functionality will activate. So that means I need to make sure I've got everything saved here. Make sure your index is saved. Make sure Kodika JS is saved. I'm going to now open a command prompt. I'm going to open. Remember, you can um, shift click. So I'm going to go back to my. I'm going to go back to my folder uh, in, in an explorer window. I've got my current project right there. Shift right click. Shift right click. Open command window here. Before we go further, let's confirm something here. Taco platform. Show me the platforms that are attached to this project. Uh, I usually like to do this when I move one project from one folder to another, just in case. Sometimes everything doesn't copy over. And this is a quick way to often check, did the, did the files properly copy over? If it worked, it should say you've got Android ready to go and you've got browser. If you don't, we're going to take a break soon, and we need to make sure we've copied the whole folder. I know for at least a couple of people, when you copied it out of my folder, it didn't copy completely. That might be because several of us were copying it at once, and a file was locked while someone else was trying to move it. Uh, so that all looks good there. I want to see it on my real device. I guess I can run it off browser here, but I can't wait. So I'll do taco run Android. So, open command window. I think it says command window or command prompt here. Yes. But you're not using Node.js, or you are using It is. It's just that at the very top here, uh, if I specifically go to Start Menu and Launch Node, the Command Prompt window will be branded as Node. But in internally, it's still just a Command Prompt, a terminal window. So by doing it this way, it's not branding it as Node, but it still has all the functionality of Node and Taco and everything. So there should be new stuff that needs to be processed and updated because we've just added the JavaScript pouch file, we've added more HTML code, we've added um, JavaScript code, so let's see if mine works. And if it, to get it running on your device? Yeah, no, what, what command you just type after Well, I did the command to run it on my device, taco run Android. So this, uh, if this works on mine, then we'll take a we'll, we'll break for a quick moment to see if it's running for everyone. Then we'll go on. But let's see mine first. It could, of course, been a couple of things here and there that might have tripped us up. But let's see on mine. 
So I've got my screenshot uh, loading up, uh, and then it cuts off automatically before 10 seconds. I see the button My Classes. It does open the My Classes window, and then I'm going to add just class 1, 2, 3, Android, Smith, Save Class. I get a little message at the bottom, trust me. A little message at the bottom that says save classes. I'll show classes. And then I've got right there my my stuff loading up. My table. So I could test it also with Taco Run Browser, if you guys want to see something. And it'll behave, should behave just about the same. You want to hold down Shift and then right-click your folder and select Open Command Prompt. No, no, after that. Oh, back to after you do Taco Run Browser. Yeah. You want to do. Image, image, image. You want to do Control C. You want to you want to cancel the browser to emulate it. It's Taco emulate Android. So here I'm, I'm running it on Chrome with Taco Run Browser, uh, and then putting it in Mobile Friendly View. My classes, class one, two, three, Android, Campus, save class, save class, show class. There's the class. So it's working visually. We still need to fix things up here and there, but it seems to be working. Gonna add class XXX. Save class. Actually, I don't want class XXX anymore, so I'll select to delete it, and it deleted it. So it should be functional at this point. We still have some polish to do and so forth. But let's confirm that this works for everyone. We're gonna take our first break. I'm going to put the, my code back in the folder if you want it. Uh, we'll take a 10-minute break at 7.04. We'll be back at 7.05. And let's make sure it's working for everyone.